Imagine you were born in a poor family, in a poor country, and by the time you were 28 years old, you have so much money you can't even count it. The Netflix drama Narcos, uh, it's a big one. Season three is on the way. Two of the main characters are two DEA agents. They're part of the show, big part of the show, but more importantly, were a key part in tracking down and uh, the destruction of Pablo Escobar, Colombian drug lord and killer. And the two real guys, the guys, the men, the DEA agents, are in Melbourne and they're in the studio. Steve Murphy and Javier Pena are joining us. Gentlemen, welcome to Melbourne. Thank you, Justin. It's a pleasure to be here. You've been, well, you've been here for, what, 24 hours? Have you taken down any kingpins <laughs> while, you've, uh, while you've been here? Not yet, but we've got our eye on you. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And I'm, we've tried to get a lot of sleep in. <laughs> I'm dying to know. I know you guys uh, did consult on the series. Did you watch it? Did you watch the, the finished product? Um, not until it came out on the, when everybody, when you saw it is when yeah. we saw it. Okay. Um, we, we were offered to see the different episodes along the way when you're out in California, but... We wanted to wait and see what the final product was. And what did you think of it? It's a great action series. It's it's honestly it's not like watching yourself up there. You know they, they call you, they use your name, but it's you know it's not us. Yeah. <laughs> there is always a concern that when you have bad guys and good guys, that the audience might cheer on the bad guy mm -hmm. and want them to actually win. Now, when we talk about bad guys, Escobar was up the there, wasn't he? The he was about as bad as uh, yeah. as bad as human beings get. You were concerned about. The audience cheering for him, I would imagine. Yeah, we try, and and that's one of the reasons when we signed on with uh, Netflix. We, you know, our condition was that Pablo Escobar was not going to get glamorized because, I mean, you know, we, you know, some people refer to him as a Robin Hood, and you know, he's not Robin Hood. Robin Hood didn't put a a bomb on an airplane. Robin Hood didn't kill a presidential candidate. Robin Hood didn't kill thousands and thousands of innocent people. So that was our our message. Pablo Escobar is no Robin Hood. Uh, he's a mass murderer, you know. So that that was our concern, and I think they, you know, Netflix pretty much uh, adhered to that. How many police would have been killed by Pablo Escobar and his men over a five-year period? Over a five-year period, Pablo Escobar killed thousands of police officers. And and remember, you know, he, he's the inventor of narco-terrorism. I mean, we never had heard of car bombs in the narcotics uh, era. So he was placing car bombs anywhere he could at convoys where police officers were going to... Uh, so I always tell people being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And, uh, you know, this guy was placing 10 to 15 car pumps on a daily basis. And he, he, he killed friends of yours. Yes, he killed yeah. a lot of good friends of mine. That's why, you know, it's kind of personal. And, you know, when you mentioned I still haven't seen uh, season uh, two, I saw season one. I'm, I'm, you know, it just brings back a lot of memories. So yeah. I, I'm waiting until and so, I'm ready. And why was it so hard for, for them to catch him then? Well, it's when you've got somebody that'll go to the lengths that he would go to to impose his will on everybody else, and it, you know it didn't matter was it it was it you and I or was it the president of Colombia, because the man picked up the phone and called the presidential palace. I can't do that in the United States. I can't get Uncle Donald going to phone just, with me. Probably you know? just as well, Steve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but you know he had no remorse. He had no conscience. He felt no guilt. He would smile at you, and if you didn't do what he asked you to, he'd still smile at you and slit your throat right yeah, there. Yeah. And you were talking about the police officers killed in that 18-month period from when he escaped from his custom-built prison, which in our show, we'll take you inside the prison. We'll show you things you won't see anywhere else. Wow. That from that time until he was killed in December 93, there were 143 Colombian National Police officers killed as a result of just that one case. That didn't include all the other violent crimes going on in the country, the guerrilla activity. It's just horrible. And that might be that uh, La C uh, Catedral, the prison, might be one of the things that people watching the series think is exaggerated or not quite true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. is that absolutely what happened in Colombia at the time? It, it's true, but, but what's false about the TV show is the, the prison they show you in Narcos is not anywhere close to being as nice and opulent as the prison Pablo built. Wow. And we'll show you that tonight uh, or later this now week. Now, that's on th – actually, I will plug that now. It's at Hamer Hall on Thursday night. That's the 13th. Tickets through Ticketmaster, or you can just book it straight through the Arts Centre. Well worth it by the sound of it. Steve, there is that famous picture of you uh, posing over the body 
of a dead Pablo Escobar. I've got to say, it's probably a first for me. I'm not sure about you, Kate. I don't think I've ever talked to someone who's posed over uh, <laughs> a, uh, a dead body before. I know that people would mention that, that to you all the time, but it's an interesting shot because you try to read your face. You're smiling in mm-hmm. that, as though you'd just taken down a deer and right. you were posing for it. It's... Can you tell us what you were thinking at that moment? I can. And, and actually, that's, we address this at the show as well. And, and, you know, the neat thing about our show is at the end we do a Q&A. And, and people think that we will shy away from the hard questions. We don't. You know, we, we're here to tell the truth. And that's why our presentation is so easy to do. You know, last year we did 75 shows. This year we'll probably hit 100 shows. Hmm. Um, but, and just very quickly, on that photograph, the reason we're all smiling is because everybody in those pictures is a police officer, is in law enforcement. We all knew that effective immediately, that very second that Pablo was killed, everybody in the country of Colombia was safer. And I'm not making this up. I mean, you can go back and check the crime statistics. It's easy to sit, you know, it's easy to be on stage or be on radio and say things that nobody else can support. But if you go back and check your history, Medellin was the murder capital of the world in 1992 and 1993. A few months after Pablo was killed, we went back and checked the crime statistics. The murder rate had dropped by almost 80% simply because one man was gone. 